The ship manufacturer Drake has finally entered the starter ship market with the cutter. And I want to share my review of this little box shaped contraption. I'm just kidding. Right now. <laughs> Let's begin. I have a new ship format. So let's start with the table of contents. We'll begin by talking about the ship's designed purpose. We'll move on to its capabilities, which include combat, cargo capacity, and range. We'll cover some of the utility of the ship, like what vehicles it can carry, for example. We will then discuss both in-game and real money costs to pledge. Finally, we'll summarize with a discussion about the ship's closest competition. Drake has designed the cutter to be tough, versatile, and user-friendly. Starter ships are designed to give the user a taste of the verse. It's designed to give you an introduction into the possibilities and opportunities that await you. The cutter is well designed for this, if not one of the best in the way of starter ships. From its tough armored hull, 4 SCU capacity, all the way to its extended range capabilities, the cutter is a great place to start for any new star citizen. Some starter ships are fairly nuanced and limited in what they allow you to achieve as a new player. While most starter ships do give a taste of many of the professions available in Star Citizen, the cutter is probably one of the best. You can run delivery missions, haul cargo, participate in player-driven exploration, do quest missions, entry-level bounty hunting, and travel for long distances without refueling. The only thing that you cannot do is mining in the current available gameplay loops. What is most impressive to me about this ship is its touted strength and range compared to the others. CIG has on a few occasions emphasized the strength of fuel economy of the cutter to be head and shoulders above its competition. If we look at all of the early indications, this may prove to be true. Though we should give time for any stack corrections or adjustments, at the early outset, it seems the cutter is designed for longer range capability. I think it's a bit early or too early to get excited, but if all the current indications are correct, the cutter will be your premier pyro capable starter ship. Now I will briefly explain my logic, which by the way, might be flawed. So please take this with a grain of salt and particularly when deciding if you want to add this ship to your fleet. The Cutter is featured in the IAE story of Jax McCleary, where he is in Pyro and is specifically shown flying a Cutter back to Stanton. The second indication is that the Cutter has two size one fuel tanks. Also, in the game, the fuel range is set to 6,000, which I believe is measured in liters. And this compares very well with some larger ships. For my last point, we do know that CIG is updating fuel capacity on all ships, so this one may look different in comparison to other ships soon enough. With this information and the current indications, it seems the Cutter is your Pyro designated starter ship. This is not to say that CIG won't introduce new starter ships by the time Pyro comes around or even buff the existing ones. What we do know is that Pyro is three times the size of Stanton and smaller ships won't be able to make many quantum jumps within the system without needing to refuel. I recommend waiting for more clarity on this from CIG before making any acquisition decisions solely on this factor. Looking at the technical specifications, we can see that the ship has respectable straight line speed, with a comparable SCU capacity of 4 among the starter ships. We also know that it has respectable hull resilience, which compensates for its weaker single shield generator. It has all your other typical starter ship bells and whistles as well, like a quantum and jump drive. From a combat perspective, it is serviceable for a starter ship with 2 size 2 gimbal weapons and 2 size 2 dual rack size 1 missiles, to make up a total of 4 missiles. Again, if you are into combat, this ship is decent for just dipping your toes in, but I would recommend picking up something different if you are serious about combat, as a few other starter ships lead the way in this category. For cargo running, you will find this starter to be a decent option for getting started in this profession. 4 SEU is low to mid-tier for entry-level starter ships, with the lowest being 2 and the highest being roughly 6. 
I should specify that I am comparing with other ships within the entry level starter designation, as there are levels to starter ships and their capabilities. The biggest potential draw to the cutter, in my opinion, will be its fuel economy, if my thoughts earlier are proven accurate. With the current fuel configuration at the time of the recording of this video, the Cutter is the king of long range among the entry level starter ships, and it's not even close. If comparing to the Hull A, which is the cargo hauling designated starter, then it fills in at second place, to be fair. So if you are planning to be a dedicated hauler only, then you may want to also consider the Hull A. In regard to its utility, the Cutter is not really designed to carry the majority of available vehicles at the time of this recording. However, it can comfortably fit the Greycat PTV, and if you have decent parking skills, the Greycat STV. It's worth stating that while the STV fits, if you are not precise in your parking, the STV can prove problematic for traversal within the ship when getting in and out of the vehicle. If you're one to try to force things, some have been able to fit the rock into the cutter, though I don't personally recommend it at all. I think you are asking for problems if you decide to go this route. The cutter does have a bed, weapon rack, and bathroom. Though these conveniences are not often touted, when thinking of the future of the game, you will want to take these amenities into account when making your final decisions. So, as with all newly released ships, you aren't able to purchase this in-game just yet. You typically have to wait roughly two months before they go on sale within the game. To pledge real money, if you are watching this during the IAE 2952 event, there is a discounted war bond pledge for $45. This comes with lifetime insurance and access to the game. If you're purchasing standalone, you will spend 40 US dollars war bond, which also comes with lifetime insurance. The store credit version is 45 US dollars and comes with 120 months or 10 year insurance. Strictly sticking with its direct competition, the Cutter is firmly in the entry level starter ship category, and as such, we want to look at ships like the Aurora, the Mustang, and 100 series as its most direct competition, at least in my opinion. Now I cannot deny that it is very tempting to express the benefits of choosing a tier 2 starter like the Avenger Titan, which is head and shoulders a better ship in a few categories for a small increase in pledge cost. However, for the cutter's size and cost, I think it's a great introduction ship all by itself to the Star Citizen universe. As with most entry-level starting ships, it is definitely worth considering other ships like the Avenger Titan or the Cutlass, but the cutter definitely fits well into this particular category. So I think that covers everything, and if you are a veteran of the game and have some additional thoughts to share, please do so in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy the rest of my ship review series that should be on your screen right now. With that said, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed, please let me know by hitting the like button. If you want to be notified when I release more videos, please subscribe and hit the bell notification. That's all from me, I'll see you in the next video.